The Bluetti AC300 and its accompanying B300 battery has quickly become my favorite semi-portable hybrid home battery backup solution. And here are three things that make this unique. First, the modular stackable approach. The Bluetti AC300 houses the inverter electronics, the charging circuits, and the various clever bits, and is stackable with the separate B300 unit, which houses the actual battery cells. There is no battery in this AC300 unit itself. You can expand the system with up to four of these B300 units easily for up to 12.4 kilowatt hours of storage, but just one alone offers a fairly sizable 3,100 watt hours. This is the first time I've seen such a modular approach, and we'll talk more about that later, the benefits and drawbacks of it. Second, the Bluetti AC300 offers two tails of solar input. As well as discrete reporting of both solar inputs, it also means you have twice the input capability of most larger battery systems with up to a whopping 2,400 watts of solar input possible. Thirdly, it has a huge array of outputs on the AC300, as you can see here. And if you're desperate, you can even hook up a USB or 12 volt carport appliances directly into the B300 battery module should you not have use of the AC300 inverter for whatever reason. I'm James Bruce. I will hope you join me for today's MUO review as I take a deep dive into the Bluetti AC300 and B300 battery backup and why it might be your ideal solution uh, for your hybrid home and travel needs. So first up, I want to talk about delivery, and I wouldn't normally mention the unboxing or that sort of thing, but I thought it worth noting here because the delivery of this came on a pallet and is extraordinarily heavy. The packing note said 100 kilos, though that could have just been their shipping rating. Now, I'm lucky enough to live somewhere with a big driveway and garage to store boxes in, but if you have restricted delivery options or you live in an apartment, I think you'll struggle to get this delivered successfully. On top of that, you're also gonna need two people to help shift the boxes and actually get these out. Although the actual weight of the AC300 or B300 devices isn't overly heavy, the boxes they come in are very secure, triple layer cardboard, and the packing foam is extraordinarily high density. And of course, this means a great safe delivery for the product, but even once you've taken it out, I found the box and packaging was still unusually heavy, even with nothing in it. And of course, you'll want to store that in case of any warranty claims or issues. So it's just something to bear in mind. You do need some space to actually unpack, probably two people and somewhere to store the boxes. In terms of box contents, the AC300 first, you do of course get a manual. You then get two large custom charging cables, the thicker of which is for the AC connection, the slightly smaller of which is for the dual MC4 inputs. You also get an MC4 to carport cable. So in case you want to charge from your car, uh, that can just emulate a solar panel effectively. You can plug it into one of the solar chains. It also comes with a convenient bag to store all the cables and manuals in, which is very much appreciated. Then separately, you have the B300, which as well as another manual includes a custom interconnect cable uh, for between the B300 and AC300 and another solar charging cable, this time XT90 to MC4. Now you can plug two batteries, two B300 units directly into the AC300, uh, and you can also daisy chain another one off of each of those batteries, allowing for four total with one AC300 unit. There's a lot of potential here to really build out a large system, as well as being able to combine two AC300s. Lastly, Bluetti is supporting the Light and African Family Program and you get this very weighty thick glass token to show that you've supported that along with a pamphlet explaining what it actually is. Now, personally, I could have done without a big block of glass. Uh, however, I do think it's a very admirable program that means part of your purchase pays for a complete solar lighting kit to be given to a family without power. That's lighting plus a battery and a small solar panel to power it all. There are apparently 1.2 billion people around the world who lack any sort of access to electricity. That's about 15% of the entire world population. Meanwhile, the average British home 
would need four of these for one day's worth of power. I'm not going to dwell on this and get too political, that's not why you search for a review of the AC300. But it is something to think on in a world where just 2,000 odd people have a combined net worth of over 10 trillion dollars. Okay, let's talk about design. As I mentioned, the AC300 and B300 are actually two completely separate units. And of course the B300 weighs a lot more because that contains the battery part of the modular system. Each one of these has its own carrying handles on either side, but the AC300 weighs only around 20 kilograms or 48 pounds, while the B300 is almost twice that at 80 pounds or 36 kilograms. Both, as I say, are fairly heavy, and I struggled to lift the B300 safely on my own. You do really need someone on each handle. There are no wheels either, so while this is technically portable, it's best to think of it as a hybrid whole home RV or cabin system that can be moved if you need to. But it's certainly not something you're going to take camping ever. So I do really like this modular approach. Modular products aren't always a good idea. We all know what happened to the very smartphone modular designs uh, over the years that never materialized or were well, just terrible. But in this case, I think it makes a lot of sense. It means that you can easily swap out or replace the battery or inverter unit if either of those fails or if you want to upgrade if your needs change. For instance, Bluetti just released the AC500 with even greater output capabilities that's fully compatible with the B300 battery and gives you two thirds extra potential output. I'd also be inclined to think it's going to be more reliable because of the increased airflow. Though obviously this isn't a long-term test, so I can't verify that. But in comparison to all-in-one units, which have to be designed to maximize the small space available, if you look along the side of the AC300, you can actually see a large part of the middle is completely empty, giving much better airflow. And presumably that's why it's able to handle higher loads. I'll also mention that it runs disconcertingly quiet, and that may also be due to better cooling. Most of the all-in-one large batteries, if you plug in anything more than a few hundred watts, even just if it's input or output, those fans are like a jet engine. So this has been in our kitchen now for a couple of weeks, and it'll happily run the kettle or the hot plate, along with 500 watts of solar, not a peep out of it at all. Occasionally you'll get some ever so slight whir, ooh, but I didn't even notice it at first. It was my wife who was like, no, 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 shh, listen. So that alone is fantastic. On the downside, it does make everything a bit bulkier, especially that interconnect cable, which while I understand the length uh, is necessary for connecting another battery underneath this one, is just far too long when you just have one on top of the other. So it would be nice if they had designed that to be at a right angle, so, or overall shorter, uh, so that it could fit flush with the side of the system. The shape of the AC300 unit is mostly just designed to stack with the B300, which it does well. And you might see that space down the middle as wasted space. The other downside, especially for me as a reviewer, is that it makes the technical specs of this whole system a lot more complex. For instance, you can charge the B300 directly using solar with this small solar cable. And that only goes up to 200 watt max at 12 to 60 volts. But if you connect your solar to the AC300, you can use the inverter in there to charge at 2400 maximum through two separate chains at 12 to 150 volts. Meanwhile, the B300 battery unit itself offers a 12 volt car port and some USB ports that can be enabled using this physical button. While you need the AC300 for 110 or 220 volt AC output, plus 24 volts uh, car port and more USB ports. And these are again independently controlled via the touchscreen. So if you turn on the DC output from the touchscreen, it doesn't affect the ports down here on the battery. And if you turn on the physical button there, it doesn't affect those. And on top of that, there are two power buttons here and here but only one will turn the whole thing off. Only the one on the battery, if you turn that off, will switch this off too, whereas either one can turn it on. Still, despite those slight weirdnesses with the user interface, I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. So I mentioned the LCD screen. 
Let's talk about that before we venture uh, around the sides. This is a full color touchscreen. It's fairly large and it's very responsive, I've found. On the main home screen, it displays an aggregate solar input, total DC output, total AC output, as well as percentage of battery remaining and any AC input. What it doesn't, however, show is an estimate of the battery time remaining. And while that doesn't particularly matter to me, it does seem like a bit of an odd emission. Now that said, the estimates you get with other battery packs for time remaining are never really that reliable, given that power usage can often fluctuate. But even so, I think they're broadly correct enough to be useful if you have something with a fixed power draw plugged in, so I'm just not sure why it wasn't included here. There's also a fairly complex menu structure here that you can delve into and see more details on, say, individual solar input voltages, percentage of each individual battery remaining if you have more than one connected, and a whole series of useful configuration options, such as making the solar chains uh, parallel. But I would have liked to see more. Considering how big and bright and beautifully color that display is, it would have been nice to see some graphing capabilities, for instance, or even just more configuration options such as time of day set charging. Personally, I have super low electric overnight, uh, but right now I need a mechanical timer to do this. So despite having such a gorgeously big screen, the menu and the configuration options are just a little bit shallow. All right, let's look at outputs. The AC300 features six 20 amp sockets on our UK model, though on the US 110 volt model, you're gonna find six standard 20 amp sockets plus one larger 30 amp socket. You can also get 220 volts on the US model, but only by combining two AC300 units, and you'll also need an optional Fusion Box Pro uh, connecting them too. Every single port here is connected by its own little rubber cover and it's spaced well apart, which I definitely appreciate because we often get some silly sized adapters in the UK that just stick well out above or below. The unit is rated to 3000 watts continuous, which is enormous and has a 6000 watt surge capacity. So this alone would have the output capability to power a small home. To be specific with that surge value though, it can go for two minutes at up to 3750 watts, five seconds if you're between 3750 to 4500, and only half a second if you're over 4500 watts. So this can handle any large appliance. I could even charge my car from this, but don't run more than one at once. So for instance, my kettle, 2800 watts. The induction hob is 1200 watts. Attempting to run them both together does trip the AC300, but it's easy enough to reset. Just dismiss the alarm from the touchscreen, turn on the AC, off and on again, but it's all fine. But individually for those appliances, we had no problem at all. So as I said, we've had this in the kitchen now for a couple of weeks and we've been boiling all of our water on here as well as cooking entirely on this and using it like a completely sort of off grid, mini grid there effectively. And it's performed like an absolute champ. In an emergency situation, this will be a lifesaver. Now, in addition to the AC outputs, you'll also find a DC 12 volt, 30 amp aviation socket and a 24 volt, 10 amp socket, which looks like a car socket, but isn't. So don't confuse it for one of those regular cigarette lighters. Don't plug in 12 volt appliances because it's actually 24 volts. As I said, if you do want a 12 volt uh, carport appliance, put that directly into the battery itself. Then further on the AC300, you're gonna find a USB-C 100 watt PD, two 18 watt fast charge USB-A, and two 15 watt standard five volt USB-A sockets. And on top of the whole thing is two 15 watt Qi chargers, which I really appreciate. Then separately down on the B300, as I mentioned, is a carport 12 volt, and another USB-C 100 watt and a USB-A 18 watt. I told you this was complicated. So in terms of input and charging, the AC 300 is absolutely insane and by far the highest possible input that I've seen on a hybrid home and portable battery yet. The AC 300 features no less than two separate MPTT controllers for two separate input chains of solar and that supports 12 to 150 volts. Now this is a big range. It is both very low and very high and that is great 
because it means you can charge either from sort of very small portable low voltage solar panels as well as high voltage static panels like I have outside. And again, with two chains of those inputs, you can really max out your charge rate using whatever solar panels you have to hand. You can take advantage of those. Now, the maximum that you can charge from solar is a total of 2,400 watts. And I haven't been able to get anywhere near that, not because of a technical problem, just because we haven't had that much sun as we head into the autumn here in the UK. And the most I have is 1,000 watts of static independent solar anyway. However, I was able to get the full 2,400 watts from AC. Now, interestingly, if you're gonna charge off both solar and from AC, the maximum you can get is 3,000 watts total. Not sure what's going on there, but I'm guessing one of the inverters is sort of shared between solar and AC, but that's still more than enough to charge it in an hour and a half. Now, again, this is where things get very complicated because the B300 battery itself also has up to 200 watts of solar input directly without use of the AC300. If you have two B300 batteries connected, your total possible input becomes 5,400 watts. That's 3,000 watts from the AC plus 2,400 watts over solar. But with just one battery, it's limited to 3,000 watts. Finally, let's talk price and whether you should buy the AC300 and B300 from Bluetti. At 3,700 US dollars for the AC300 and B300 one battery bundle, that works out at about $1.20 per watt hour, which is a little higher than some competitors, but I think the absurdly high solar and AC charge rate make up for that. And as usual, if you buy additional batteries at the same time, the price comes down to a dollar per watt hour or less. So excellent value for money the more you scale it. The inverter is crazy powerful and the whole thing can easily be scaled to a whole house system along with their smart breaker circuit and uh, more batteries. The battery tech inside of here is lithium ion phosphate or LIFEPO4 rated to 3500 cycles, which again is above industry average and excellent value for money. So realistically, you will be getting 10 years of good life out of this, even if you used it every single day. After that 10 years, it would be 80% capacity, but still very much usable, assuming nothing else is broken. But if you're just getting this for emergencies anyway, you may not even be using it every single day. I do really like the modular approach that they've taken here, yet it does result in some wasted space and a bulkier product than you'd be getting from one of those all-in-ones. But being able to swap out and replace or upgrade the separate parts is very much welcome in terms of sustainability. So despite being slightly lower capacity than say the EcoFlow Delta Pro, I'd say this has toppled that as my favorite off-grid hybrid portable battery, mainly because of the higher solar input, the two separate input chains and more modular approach, as well as the significant difference in noise produced. The only downside to me of the Bluetti AC300 and B300 is that yes, it's technically portable, but it doesn't have any wheels. So carrying it comfortably really needs two people. And of course there's two different units there. It does stretch the definition of portable and you'll also need a fair amount of space to store those sizable packaging boxes in. Anyway, that's it uh, from me. Thanks to Bluetti for sending this over to check out and thanks to you for watching. I hope I've told you what you need to know about the Bluetti AC300 and B300 power backup solution. Be sure to hit like if I did, or let me know in the comments what I missed if I didn't. And consider subscribing for more reviews, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time, and I think I've never meant this more than now, stay safe, it's a weird world out there.